Um, hi, my name is Adam Bain. Um, I'm going to give just a brief overview of Django REST framework. So if you've been using Django for a while, or even if you haven't, um, this should be kind of introductory. Uh, I'm going to get over a couple of slides, and then I want to dive into some uh, code, um, get that started. So um, yeah, this is just about me. I, like Brian said, I'm here at Vocal, a systems engineer. Um, what's Django REST framework? Uh, well, it was started by Tom Christie in 2011, so it's, you know, I guess kind of new. Um, recently just uh, moved to a 3.0 release, and uh, they did that really uh, through crowdfunding. There was a great uh, Kickstarter campaign, which actually, proud to say that Vocal is a backer of, a major backer of. Yeah. And uh, there are some other Django REST packages out there. Um, TastyPy is around. It's kind of the, uh, the alternative. Piston is, uh, uh, I don't think Piston's really being maintained anymore. So it's really, the big ones are TastyPy and Django REST framework. So um, overall architecture. So um, there's a, a lot of stuff that's included. Uh, models, for one. You're already doing these. You know, these are just standard Django models. Um, you also have a uh, uh, part of the architecture is serializers, which I'll talk, to, talk about a little bit more. Uh, your API views can be uh, class-based, but they can also be functions. Um, we mostly use class-based all the time just because it makes inheritance and doing all these things. There's a lot of cool mix-ins that you can use with uh, Django REST framework. You know, your URL conf configuration, so you lay out your API the way you want it. Um, you have permissions. There's also a great like test client, so you can just, you know, in your test, hit the API as if it was a client hitting the API and check all the data that's coming back. Uh, you get some other nice bits. You get authentication. You get renders and parsers, throttling. You get pagination. Uh, basically, it follows from the Django philosophy where you get a lot of batteries included, Python philosophy too. Um, and you could choose. They're all pretty much pluggable. So if you want to swap your own class in there, you can do it. There's an interface. Oh. And one other thing you get is a nice browsable interface to all this. So when you design your API, you can open it up in Chrome and Firefox and just see the data coming out. And it's really awesome. I'll show, the, show you that in a minute. Um, so what's the role of a serializer? If you're not familiar, it's basically import data to and export data out of an object. So your model object, you know, the uh, objects that come from those models. Uh, to serialize it means that you're uh, you know, sending data to the client in some serialized format. So that could be you know, JSON, XML, uh, or you can render it to like an HTML document, anything like that. Uh, Django REST framework, framework handles this with the uh, renderer. Um, it's actually negotiating with an ex, uh, HTTP accepts header. So the client can say, oh, I want XML or I want JSON. And uh, if it's something that you have the, um, you've enabled as a uh, pluggable renderer, then it will return that. Deserialize is just working in the opposite direction. You're getting data from the client, and you're building an object, and you probably are saving it in your database. Um, so it has a parser where you take this data in, makes an object, and then it also can do validation on that object. Okay. Um, there's a couple different auth methods that you can use. It does support basic auth, token auth, cookie auth, and OAuth. So uh, you probably will want to be using, you know, we, we use token auth a lot um, just because that, it gives you a little more flexibility. A cookie auth is kind of gross, I think, but, um, you know, if you're doing, it, it's sometimes applicable, though. So, um, And then you can do permissions based on, you know, the user's uh, authentication level. And you can do that on, like, a endpoint level basis. So, like, if you're this type of user, you can only access these endpoints. But you can also say you can also say that you can only access these particular objects. So you can do object level permissions as well. And again, it's all customizable. You're probably seeing a theme here. If you don't like any of the options that Django REST framework provides, you can usually plug it your own in. Uh, you also get throttling, so you can limit uh, the number of times a client can hit the API endpoint. So um, it's really simple to say, you know. And, and you can do it based on whether the uh, client is logged in or not. So if they're anonymous, you say, okay, well, you can only hit it you know, 60 times an hour. But if you're logged in, you can hit it 1,000 times an hour or something like that. And uh, it'll spit out a retry after, which is a 
HTTP standard for this is the next time you should try this uh, request because you're currently being throttled. Um, you also get pag pagination included. Um, and the way that basically works is if you're getting a long list of stuff, you get a next and previous URL that you can use to traverse the list. Um, so yeah, the point is there's lots and lots of batteries included. And I don't have time to go over all of it, but I wanted to go over some of the core code uh, in a DRF project. So I created a small little project. Um, I'm going to go to the models first because that's kind of the where you'd probably start. So this is kind of the standard, you know, authors and book project just to show that there's a relationship. Uh, you have an author with a first and last name and then um, a password, which, yeah, don't do it like this because it's terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, so we'll just say that that, yeah, that's just, that's something that, we'll, we'll say that's an example of some kind of piece of data that you don't want to be serialized out to a client. So that could be a password, it could be some other like metadata that you don't necessarily always want to serialize out. Uh, book is just uh, the title and then uh, it refers to that author. And then I'll just show you the serializers that manage that data. So you have a uh, you know, standard book serializer, and this is a model serializer, serializer, so it will actually inspect that book model and build the fields off of that. It's really awesome. Uh, same thing with author, basically, except you're excluding you know, the password field. I don't want to show that out. I don't want to have it be set either. Uh, I also did, um, and I'll kind of get into this a little bit later, but a custom serializer slightly where you uh, are digging a little bit deeper through the book object so you can say, okay, and, and this will make sense when I show the, uh, the browser version real quick. Let me actually start that up. Um, so let me kick off the, uh, let me just run, oh, I need to cancel the, uh, Yeah, I didn't want to run. I had a IPython notebook running, which was the presentation. I'll run this in a separate instance. This is latest uh, Django REST framework and latest Django. Um, let me get back to my browser. Um, yeah, so this is the, um, so I'll just kind of go to the API root here. This is the uh, browsable uh, API. So. Um, you see here, this is kind of the request coming in. So you have a get request for the bookstore coming in. And then um, you have you know, a 200 coming back and saying, okay, these are the two kind of endpoints that you can go ahead and browse. There's an author endpoint and a book endpoint. So we'll start with the author. Um, and I just kind of created a couple authors in there. And you have a form here so you can add you know, like a new one. I'm going to add Brian, Brian Ray. You've written a book, right, Brian? Yeah. Um, and then you'll just see that it uh, it gives you that object. But if you go back to the uh, the list, I'll just leave. no, I don't want to resend uh, author list here. Um, you're just added in there. So yeah, there's a new new object. So now you're you're officially an author, Brian. Um, so yeah, you, they all have IDs, and you can. Uh, the other nice thing is you can just, uh, you know, let's say I want to get more detail on one of those objects. I just go to six, and now I, um, and this kind of goes off of what you were saying before, Chris. Is uh, you know this is the detail view, so you can pull up one individual instance of the object, um, and then you know I can delete you too. Um, I won't do that though. Uh, <laughs> but um, so yeah. Uh, then we'll just kind of go to the, the next couple things that I wanted to show you. So this this is the really cool, I, I, the way I think of this sometimes is um, who uses like IPython or like just the console? I mean, I think everyone does this when they're working on code. This is the way I think of like working on the fr like REST frameworks. This is your REPL essentially. You can do stuff and see how it impacts this. I, I use it a lot, I don't know. Um, so um, we'll go over the, just the URLs. In this case, I've used, um, uh, well, let me go to views first, actually. Um, so I've created two view sets. Uh, view sets are this kind of, they're, they're kind of magical things in J Django REST framework where they say, look, I have this model. Um, I know what the serializer is. And I know, you know, this is a standard J Django query set. And you can 
instead filter if you wanted to. You didn't have to use all. Um, and it says, look, build me a bunch of views that do creation, listing, uh, you know, update, delete, do all of those. And then um, later in the URLs, you can basically just say, yeah, OK, uh, put that under the uh, endpoint author. So take all those views that you made and just throw them under author and then add that to the URLs comp. So that's how, when I get to the browser here, author has actually, there's like five views here. If you go, you know, there's all these different things you can do to it. There's get, put, patch, delete. It's all just, it's, it's um, very kind of magical and I don't know, you know, it's always, sometimes you want more customizability than that and you can do that. You can just say, no, I want to override uh, the delete method, or I want to have the delete method do something else, or I want to override patch. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go forward a little bit. Um, yeah. So I have a, a couple other um, iterations of this that I'll just show you real quick. Uh, so if I uh, get... Um, so if I go to like the next phase of this then and just show you a, little, a couple other differences that you can do. Um, in this case, I've done a couple of new things. Um, oh, I didn't, I didn't really show you this endpoint last time. This um, is still there. So it's this list. You can add basically custom routes. So I said, in this case, I, I want to use this custom serializer I built that not only shows the book, but also shows the associated author with that book in the same uh, data structure. I'll show you that serializer real quick. All I really did is add depth one, so um, there's nesting to these objects, and it says, go ahead and grab any objects that are associated and go one level deeper and give me that, uh, ser serialize that object out to me too. So I'll just show you what that looks like um, real quick. So let me. list. So this is like, um, it, there are a couple other changes, but you could see that this would be like this book, and then in that same uh, book, let, let me just get, let, uh, uh, if you look at this particular book, it has a title, but it also has this author associated with it. So this is the author object that is expanded into that um, that object. So if you, I'll just kind of contrast it with the standard one. Normally you just get like a link to that. But you, if you want to maybe save some round trips that your client might have to make, you can throw that information inside of that serialization and get that back. Um, one of the biggest changes that I made in this version from the last version, I changed all the serializers. I just added this hyperlinked model serializer. So that's why you're seeing links now instead of object IDs. Uh, so I'm really just going through and you can, these are all clickable in the, the uh, framework, uh, browsable framework, which is really awesome. So I can see like who's author too. Oh, it's George Orwell, okay, cool. And then you can just navigate through your API that way. It makes it really discoverable. Um, that pretty much, uh, let's see. Uh, the other thing that I had is I added this other serializer that does the kind of the same idea as what I did with the books where you can see the author that's attached to that book. Let's go the other way around and see all the books that are attached to a particular author. Um, so that's uh, the difference here is it's kind of a, uh, you have to set up this book serializer to say many. Uh, in this case, it's read only because it's kind of complicated to set uh, sets like that. Um, so let me just pull that one up. author. Sorry, I kind of got it backwards there. So if I go to author, um, that's really what's happening here. So some of these authors I only have one book for, but other authors I have multiple, and it'll just put it in a JSON array there for you. So these three books all belong to the same author, and it just throws it in there. Uh, some authors have zero, and then it's just an empty array. Um, so that really kind of covers um, a lot of it. There's one other phase I wanted to show you, um, which was kind of what I was working on. 
Uh, I just want to show you a couple other things that you can do. Um, oh, I don't want to merge. merge. Um, oh, I skipped three. That's fine. I might be digging myself a hole here. All right. I um, don't know why that didn't work particularly. Um, so um, the other thing, like I said, you can do permissions. And uh, permissions are pretty simple. In this case, what I did for a permission is I just said I wanted to make a permission with some arbitrary rule, like only authorized users can delete. So what I did is I said, look, if, um, if the request method that's coming in is delete and uh, the user is not logged in, they're anonymous, then we're going to return false in this situation. And all I really did is plug that into the, uh, the view here. And I say, you know, uh, actually, I'm not using it in this particular version, but it's right here. I'm doing something else in this case. I'm overriding it. But the, the general idea is the same. You, there's a number of different ways you can do the same thing. You can override the method and say, and do the check in there. But it's a lot easier to override like a permissions uh, object like this and say if the you, you you can also do this this is what I was talking about you can do this on the object or you can do this on the endpoint and once I create this permissions I can associate with whatever endpoint I'd like so um, yeah that pretty much covers that um, that means that if I actually go to author and let's find uh, where's Brian in here let's just go let's just go with uh, let's go with that one and if I go to delete it's going to actually use this method that I created um, here where it says, you know, re re return a 405. And um, this is an example of not using the view sets. This is using individual list and detail views. And um, it returns no data, but it says uh, HTTP 405. And you can probably see I've added a print statement just to make sure how we get there. And it's right there. So. Uh, you can kind of see how you can customize it to w meet whatever your business needs are. You can get down to overriding individual views, list, create. All those are customizable. Or if your API is very simple and doesn't have to do a lot of extra work, you can uh, use the view set and kind of the built-in nicety of it. So, um, yeah, that's Django REST framework. Are there any uh, questions? 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 Hey, uh, Mike. Mama, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, great talk. Um, I've used Tasty Pie a lot I mean, okay. like the last few years. Um, have as, have you or anybody else used Tasty Pie and REST framework? And maybe talk about uh, you know things that you like about REST or things that you like about Tasty Pie. Yeah, I don't have too much of a comparative. Uh, I've mostly been on Django REST framework, but um, if, if just based on kind of what you saw, if you, there's anything, I'd love to talk to you more about like just the com like comparison of it. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. All right.